there's a lot we didn't get to do with this Grand Strangler. Mm -hmm. We yeah. had a lot of designs, but, um, and it was never quite mentioned that he wasn't a murderer. Mm -hmm. He would strangle you till you passed out. And then <laughs> Tanya here with popculture.com and I'm so excited to welcome actor, screenwriter, director, and producer Paul Lieberstein, whose new Audible original series, Middle Space, The Rebels Attack, and then The Other Side Attacks as well, releases November 18th exclusively on Audible. Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, so um, I know we're getting into the holidays and the year is winding down. So how are you doing? Uh, really well, actually. Yeah. yeah. You've Things had a good, good year? Mm -hmm. Life is good. Uh, yeah, I, I, when I, get, I guess I'm not supposed to say that, but it's been a good year. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the Audible original series. I got a chance to hear the first five episodes of the 16, and uh, it's so funny. What was Thank the inspiration you. behind this project in particular? It's really hard to say yeah. what the inspiration was. Uh, um, I put on a short play that was uh, this character, and I just kind of really liked the guy. And just kept writing and writing until yeah. I had this thing. Um, but uh, I, I know that I've always felt um, it's a big, it's basically a, like a sci-fi, but I'm kind of calling it anti-sci-fi. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always felt that, you know, these captains of spaceships care so much about their jobs and put themselves, put their lives on the line, you know, every week in shows. And it just seems so false to me. And yeah. people want, you know, I just feel there'd be a union and people would want to put themselves in the line zero times. And, right. Um, and so this was, this was uh, taking that position and, and trying to put a more um, realistic uh, or at least uh, comic character. Mm -hmm. And I love that it's like a workspace comedy set in space. And you said it's like anti-sci-fi. It's not Star Trek. It's not Star Wars. These are real yeah. people who have gone into space and they're trying <laughs> to like live their lives. And it's very micro level with these eccentric characters interacting. So in your words, what can you tell Audible listeners about the series without spoiling anything? Um, I would say that it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's just about life on a spaceship. Mm -hmm. for, for the vast majority of it. And yes, some things happen, but not much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's an episode where the captain mispronounces uh, the word violin. He right. says violin. <laughs> yep. And then uh, not wanting to be proved wrong, insists that there is a instrument, violin, and mm -hmm. proceeds to uh, build one and, and give a concert. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of stuff that happens in space. Yeah, I love it. I think it was so funny and clever. And like, that was the whole quip that I was just laughing about today. Like when I was listening to it and I was like, this is so like, it's real people. Like we have, we all have our little quirks and whatever. And, and this character, Starship Captain George Sway Clipton, he's played by Will Forte. Um, he's so well done and he's so well rounded too. And what made him the perfect captain for this series? Um. Well, he was the series. Like, uh, um, oh, what made Will Forte? Oh, Will <laughs> Will is God. I mean, I knew Will was talented before I worked with him, but I was just blown away yeah. by by what he can do, mm -hmm. um, and and how he how he will find every little scrap of comedy and play it up and. Um, and find stuff that wasn't that I didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's so and, and to be so honest and real at this very same time. I uh, know he was he was uh, he was brilliant. Yeah. Just lucky to work with him. Yeah. And I feel like he's very quirky character grounded in, in this endearing sort of frame. But yeah, what, yeah. What makes a character like George, you know, bordering a Michael Scott or even Ted Lasso type so relatable and loved by audiences? Yeah, that's that's really interesting. I mean, um, well, and one of the things Will did was just he's just such a likable guy mm -hmm. that um, he can do some maybe unlikable things. Um, but I think we all know people like that. We've all experienced it, you know, and it's not the exact same situation, but it's a classroom and there's a teacher like that. And we've all been there and we've probably all had a job in which 
we're we're there. I mean, we've we've all we've all experienced it at a different at one level or another. Yeah. And um, the show is narrated by John Malkovich, which I think is very complimentary to the comedy. Like it works so well. Um, why was Malkovich the perfect narrator for this audible project? He gave such great gravitas to it yeah. and balanced the silliness of it. He mm-hmm. grounded it. Um, I was so, yeah, again, and great, again, just being grateful to him yeah. that he would do this. Uh he, and he's so funny and he doesn't, he doesn't get a lot of chances to show how funny he is, mm-hmm. but he's and got he, an incredible sense of humor and yeah. can really deliver. Yeah. And I know that, I think you guys, you were talking about this last year. I remember on the office, a ladies podcast, this whole thing was being talked about. We were going to get it finally. And it's here. Um, was this all shot like in remotely, like everybody was like on zoom talking and like, do, how, how are the roles even created? Yeah, no, that was it. We were, oh. everyone was different in different locations. No one, yeah. no one did it together. Wow. We were on Zoom, but then we built this little like blanket fort for everyone for sound <laughs> and uh, shipped them a microphone. Oh. Um, and, uh, um, and then I, one of the actors who played Gunnery, uh, Chris Smith, mm-hmm. um, read with everybody. And he was, uh, you know, I credit him for kind of really helping it make it seem like uh, they were all in the same room. Yeah. Because uh, um, he just, he, he mimicked everybody. Yeah. Um, and just had such great timing and uh, improv skills of his own that. Yeah. And that the chem- that's what it is. The chemistry with everyone's so good. Like everybody just meshes and you wouldn't know that they were all like, filming across recording across the country or whatever but you know like like I've said the show is so funny and you've written some very clever dialogue for these characters I'm wondering with the cast this hilarious though is like I'm sure there's room for improv or is that encouraged or like, what's the protocol with that then because I mean like everyone's so funny can they bring something a little to them to the to their characters you know it's, it was challenging because everyone was in different places yeah so we yeah there was a little bit of improv um, but it was very hard to, to use most of it. Um, they could, they did some really funny stuff, but you need both sides. So sometimes, and you know, somebody would do something, but I've already recorded the other side, mm-hmm. you know, and, and there was a couple of cases where I went back and the, the other actor came back and I was just like, we, we just have to keep this. This is so funny. And, yeah. Um, there was in one instance where, uh, Um, uh, Sherry O'Terry um, was uh, playing, uh, saying uh, she got a job as a um, doing closet design on the on the ship, mm-hmm. and uh, Will Forte's character was who didn't have an office was asking, "Can you can you design an office?" And she says, "No, I I just do closets." And he says, "Okay, let's do an office." Uh, can you design me a closet? And instead of, um, you know, where, where clothes would hang, can you do like a flat thing? And, and then instead of where the shoes go, can you do like three drawers and then maybe a space for my legs? And, um, uh, and then there, and we just, and that was an improv and some stuff that we threw at Will and, uh, and wrote on the day. Yeah. And then we had to get it. We, we really did a lot more with Sherry mm-hmm. and we had to go back and get well. Yeah. So but that was a great one. So like, do you have a, do you have a favorite chapter in this whole thing? Cause I feel like the stories are so different and they're so unique. Do you have like a favorite one? I think that my favorite is the violin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> like that so <laughs> basically the captain mispronounces mm-hmm. violin mm-hmm. Uh, and doesn't want to, doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then has to go about building a violin. Right. Um, and giving a concert. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Is what's the biggest takeaway you want listeners to um experience with this whole audible pro- project? Just joy. It, 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 it's just for it's just fun. Yeah. You know, it was fun to do it. It was fun to to write it. Mm-hmm. It was a blast to record it. Yeah. And uh and I, I hope people just have fun listening. Yeah. And I'm having so much fun talking to you, but before I do let you go, I, 
I have to ask you about The Office. Yeah. Um, it's such a wonderful series, forever hilarious. It's one, it's one that cemented you in the vernacular of popular culture. I feel like in your character, Toby Flenderson, was very interesting. There was a lot of funny, maybe cringy moments. Um, he got fired by Dwight in the series finale, but I'm wondering, where do you think he would be today? Oh, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Um, I, 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 would, <laughs> I think he probably wouldn't have get, gotten very far. Yeah. <laughs> quite honestly, he mm -hmm. found himself in a little HR gig. Yeah. Where probably nothing that lasted quite as long. Mm -hmm. Maybe bouncing. Mm -hmm. From yeah, job to job. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny because there's like theories floating that um Toby was the Scranton Strangler. So I'm wondering, yeah. do you have any thoughts about that? Do you think he would be capable of something like that? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's uh there's a lot we didn't get to do with the Scranton Strangler. We yeah. had a lot of designs, but um, and it was never quite mentioned that he wasn't a murderer. Mm -hmm. He would strangle you till you passed out. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like there's still like room to make that sort of story. I feel like, cause I mean, you're such a brilliant writer as is. So I'm wondering like, would you ever want to return to maybe expanding that universe from the office and maybe making like a series on the Scranton Strangler or even someone else? Even Kobe. It could be fun. Yeah, I think so fine. too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Paul, thank you so much for your time today. The Audible original series, Middle Space, The Rebels Attack, and then The Other Side Attacks as well. We're, we'll release on November 18th exclusively on Audible. For more on Paul and all your Audible shows, keep a lock to popculture.com for the latest. <laughs> <laughs>